It was a uh, tough game. Uh, I thought UTEP probably defended us as well as anybody in the first half. And we had to make some adjustments in the second half. Uh, and and uh, I was proud of our guys, the way they fought, fought back and put ourselves in position to uh, go into overtime, put ourselves in position to uh, uh, come close to winning a, a, a hard fought game. Uh, it's uh, hard to lose, but I'm proud of the guys. And uh, hopefully we can build on that second half uh, as we get ready for the conference tournament. This is kind of an interesting contrast. You know, Pop uh, in, in the final minutes there was making big play after big play on both sides of the ball. And then Jeremiah, of course, made a couple of turnovers that were costly. And then there's the true freshman. Just talk about the intensity there in those final sequences. Yeah, um, I think uh, you got to give credit to Randy Culpepper. I mean, that guy is maybe the best athlete I've ever coached against. Um, he's a freak athlete. And, He's got such great anticipation that probably at times drives Tim crazy because he gambles a lot. But, uh, you know, he, he made some incredible steals. And Julian Stone, too. I'm, I'm glad those guys are seniors. Uh, they've had a terrific career at UTEP. Uh, so I think sometimes you got to give the opponent credit. Um, Jeremiah uh, puts us up, ourselves in position to win games. And, you know, at, uh, you know he's not going to be perfect. Uh, but he put ourselves in position to win. Uh, pop came out in the second half and was the pop that we've seen. And I, I was more concerned about pop defensively. Um, uh, and, and I think he had all four blocks in the second half, if I'm right. And in the first half, he was not as active. Um, and then offensively, we had to, to open things up a little bit with the high ball screen just to soften up their pressure. They did a good job of pressuring the wings, pressuring every pass. So I just try to, to soften up their defense. And then we could flow into some things a little bit better. And I thought that worked fairly well. You right. mentioned Julian Stone. He spent a lot of the afternoon covering uh, Rob. Was And Rob gets three shots off today. Yep. Was that because of his smothering defense or more of a team effort, the defensive scheme that UTEP was using? Well, I think probably both. Um, but uh, Julian Stone, I, we can't vote for own players. I vote for Pop as the defensive player of the year. Um, but I couldn't, so I voted for Julian. Uh, because Julian can guard one through four, maybe five. And, and uh, uh, he is active, he's long, he's strong. You don't realize how big he is until you stand next to him. And uh, he's a committed defender. Like, he likes to defend. And so, uh, you know, he's a tough matchup for Rob. Rob uh, has to rely heavily on movement and screens um, to get his shots. And, you know, he's not as good, you know, creating off the dribble. So uh, if he's smothered, it's tough. And he's going to be the focal point of a lot of people. You know, Pop's the first guy you want to stop on our team. Robert's the second guy. And so uh, it's important that other guys stepped up. And I think, you know, Colin did a pretty good job of that in the second half, as did Mike. Are you okay with, I mean, you, got, you ended up with a decent look there. You had to get the ball up the length of the court with 3.8. What were you thinking as uh, Robert let go? With well, I was thinking that they were going to foul, and so that if they did foul, we might have to sub and put a bigger, uh, might be Milo in to make the first, uh, miss the second. Uh, and Tim came up to me after the game. You could tell he was pretty frustrated and because he wanted to foul. And he and Julian were talking about it. And then after the game, he came up and said, you know, we, we were trying to foul. And so uh, that's what I was thinking. And then when Robert let it go, uh, personally, I thought it was going in. Uh, and, you know, we work on those situations so much that they execute them very calmly. And the only thing you could ask them to do is put us in a position to get a shot. And then the basketball gods do the rest. Um, and so, uh, you know, we were positioned to make a shot. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I'm proud of the way we fought back. And I, I think, you know, a lot of people in there are proud of that. You know, we did not win. That's disappointing. But, um, you know, we fought back and we can build on that. Matt, you had a guy that I guess actually had a second senior night in Colin uh, Mangrum. Can you kind of talk a little bit about just what he meant to the program coming in? Uh, the second half of the, or the season. Yeah. Well, Colin uh, brought in uh, a spirit and a great energy um, to our team, athleticism, uh, he, he, and he's a great shooter. 
And, and I think when he and Jeremiah kind of found their place in this team in mid to early January, that's when we started winning on a more consistent basis. And that, that started with the Memphis game at home. Uh, they both came off the bench and sparked us to a win. And at that point on, they, also, they both started. And um, their energy, um, their hustle, uh, Jeremiah and Colin, is contagious. And it not only gets our players going, but it gets the crowd going. I mean, you know, Jeremiah has uh, you know, already become a fan favorite as a freshman. Did, but on Colin, did, did, were you surprised? Did you know he was? I, mean, I had no idea. Um, Colin contacted us um, through Steve Lutz and said he's, you know, wanted to transfer to SMU. We didn't have a scholarship. He had to walk on. I've never seen him play. Uh, he was he was hurt a lot at UNT, so I had no idea what we were getting. Um, I knew, you know, when he, we started workouts, they could really shoot the basketball, and he was pretty athletic. But, you know, the game is five on five. It's not one on oh. And so uh, he was nervous through most of the non-conference schedule. And finally, when the conference schedule started, I said, Colin, you're going to play. And you relax. You just go out there and play. And um, he did. And that was uh, at Tulane. He didn't start, but he played a lot of minutes and played well. And um, then I guess the next game, I don't know if the next game was Memphis or not, but. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he, uh, he, he, he got comfortable. You said after the first game against UTEP that when you went into the locker room, your guys were angry that they had come close but not come away with the win. Do you see that same kind of uh, reaction today? Yeah, no question. They're very down. Uh, they invested a lot. Um, and and uh, they're hurt, which is good. You know, it's good. It's good to invest and hurt. Um, um, if you didn't hurt, that means you didn't invest. And so uh, that's the risk in sports. You know, if you, if you don't invest, you won't win. But if you do invest, you might lose and you might hurt. It's just like a relationship with a girl. If you don't ask her out, if you don't ask her to get married, you know, you're not going to get her. And if you do, she says no, that hurts. You might as well go for it. You're down 10 at halftime. Uh, what was the atmosphere like in the locker room, or what kinds of things did you and your staff talk them, about? You know, I went in after them. Usually I, I don't go in until like five minutes. I talk to the staff, but I, I, I wanted to set the tone. You know, sometimes I let them set the tone, but I wanted to set the tone. And I felt like we were playing uh, afraid. Uh, I felt like we got punched in the face and we didn't punch back. And so I told them that. You know, we were not active on defense. We were not cutting hard. We were not uh, aggressive and that we uh, may lose the game, but we got to fight. And, and I think we did in the second half. There's a good chance that uh, you may see UTEP in the tournament again. Uh, what's, what, what are the Mustangs got to do to get, finally get that win over UTEP in the tournament? Well, you know, I don't know who we'll see. Uh, it, it's, it's a mathematical, um, uh, it's tough. It's tough to figure it out. Herman will call me later, email me later who we're playing. And, uh, you know, if we face them again, I think the biggest thing for us lately has been the turnovers. We've got to take better care of the basketball. Um, and um, Polk has hurt us in the last two games. Uh, and sometimes you focus so much on Randy Culpepper. Um, and I thought we did a great job on him. Uh, but they've got other guys. Uh, Jeremy Williams played great. Polk played great. And I thought McCauley played very well. You know, nine, eight points and ten rebounds. Uh, we did not rebound the ball well enough. We did not box out. That's a problem that we have because we're not the biggest team in the world. Uh, so we get beat up a little bit on the offensive boards, and they had 12 second chance points. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.